Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name, again, is Jeffrey Davis, and uh, we are streaming stories every day about the new economy, how people are going back to work with this new economy. We have a full house today, if you haven't noticed. So we're going to try to get this organized and talk to everybody. We got some good friends of the show. Uh, first of all, I want to say I have my co-host here, Evan Macedo, VP of Finance and Operations at Safers and Wallach, and also our FEI, Financial Executives International Partner. Welcome, Evan. Thank you, Jeffrey. Pleasure to be here and uh, happy to do another great show with you. And what was the biggest fish you caught on the weekend? Oh, man, it was it was so big. Right. Not as big as the car that Jeff Hillen bought yesterday. He bought a big <laughs> red Jeep. So, I saw that. <laughs> so, Good day. And we're going to welcome back a returning guest and also uh, someone I've traveled with, Jeff Hillman, CEO, uh, Red House, and also his, uh, his associate, Vanessa Boji, uh, also uh, who's COO of uh, Red House. Welcome, everyone. Full house. Thanks for <laughs> Thank you. Right. I'm glad so, to be back. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about Red House. Like, that's why you bought the red car, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, easily coordinated. So anyway, so, you know, our clients are all doctors and, uh, you know, they go to school for whatever, a dozen years to learn how to do all this medicine they do. But uh, during that process, they get so little training about how to code for what they do, which is the core of how they get paid. So we exist essentially to consult and execute the strategies for how they do their revenue cycle management. And to that end, Red House exists uh, to be a, a leader in that industry, especially in the mid cap industry. Uh, and we have invested pretty heavily in artificial intelligence backed RPA or robotic process automation. And that's the part of the industry where we're leading in. So we, uh, we are trying to push into the future using technology uh, to help doctors with their revenue. Well, I know, especially during these times, uh, cash flow management has always been the priority for all businesses. And I would assume for doctors too, that the, 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 the cash flow management is the sustainable, uh, you know, oxygen that they need. So you're able to make that more predictable for them. Is that what you're saying? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> No, I was going to say yes, and I was going to say, yeah, Vanessa, go ahead and address some of the, like, the big issues they're facing. Yeah, so, you know, in medical school, uh, they're not really taught um, about the reimbursements and the denials that we deal with here on the medical billing side. Um, uh, so we, we step in not only with our robotic processes, um, but we have uh, coders on staff, so procedure codes, diagnosis codes, and, um, you know, our, our billers are dealing with over 10,000 procedure codes that change every year. Um, definitions are updated or deleted. Um, so the robotic processes when worked in um, take over a lot of what used to be our manual processes, allowing coders to um, step in and take care of the coding side of things instead of, um, data entry and things like that, uh, or um, denial follow-up. So making sure that our providers are paid and reimbursed um, at, at the maximum rate and allowing them to treat their patients and not worry about their financials. I, I know I do financials and if I had a way not to worry about the financials, that would put a lot of stress off of my back. I know you keep mentioning this uh, this term robotic process automation. Uh, do you one of you guys want to explain a little bit more what exactly robotic process automation is, just for some of the people out there that may not be as familiar with it? Yeah, sure. I'll field that one for you. So uh, RPA, right? Robotic process automation. It's essentially uh, a business process automation software, right? So it takes uh, you know, like what robots did to the assembly line, and it does that in software. So it takes all the repetitive tasks, this process, let's say, for example, of taking all the codes that doctors do that are associated with their work, and it will automate uh, the process of taking those codes from the doctor's notes to the insurance company, and then automate following that process back until the doctor sees a check uh, in their bank account. And then uh, on the back end of that, it's supported by artificial intelligence, uh, which the software uh, incorporates to learn the practice. You know, in the same way your cell phone keyboard 
will sort of learn if you've got fat fingers and it'll sort of adjust to where you go to be a more accurate typing experience. When the doctors use a software, uh, for example, a practice management software that incorporates artificial intelligence, it'll slowly learn the doctor's practice so that if there's anomalies or errors, those kind of things get flagged, which, uh, you know, which is how we're leading out right now, which is how our investments in RPA are leading out to solve these big problems. You know, Vanessa and I really look at these biggest problems as coding, reimbursement and denials. And uh, all of this has been, uh, well, not all of it, right? We're still investing, but it's been, it's been automated in a way that we have decreased the human error. We've significantly increased the speed of response time to insurance companies, which can sort of be notoriously difficult. Uh, and, and all of that to maximize the revenue for coding accuracy and increasing the velocity of the revenue cycle for these guys, which has been especially difficult this year with so much turning to telehealth, which is also all part of that platform built in together that we invested in. Wow, uh, <coughs> excuse me. You know, uh, medical practices can go anywhere from sort of small one person mom and pop practices to almost large businesses. Uh, is your software and processes more applicable to one size versus another? Or is it one size fits all? Well, it's kind of a one size fits all. Um, we do service practices as small as one practitioner up to, you know, 100 and 200 bed facilities. Um, and what our software and automated processes do allow us to do is just is be able to um, handle the volume, whether large or small, um, with more accuracy, efficiency, and also um, reducing the um, surprise bills to these patients um, because it allows for upfront eligibility and knowing these patients' um, insurance plans prior to them even walking in the door. So patients are, are aware of what will be their out-of-pocket costs um, for the most part before even seeing the physician. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. You know, you don't always get that and you get a big, big sticker price as soon as, uh, you know, a couple of weeks go by. So I, I'm sure a lot of people are appreciating that. And I know with this COVID pandemic, uh, you know, everybody's trying to work from home. Is this helping people to kind of stay safe and not going into the office? Oh yeah, because we have so many um, automated processes, um, both on the um, billing side, we offer it on the provider side because we have a HIPAA compliant telehealth platform built into the software that we use as well. That's offered to all of our providers. So that's really been a plus for them and the patients because the ease of access of that software has um, been very simple for them. Um, you know, you have people who have not really used technology, talking about sometimes the elderly population who um, has, a, has not had to deal with that, but using this, um, this platform has been, um, create a little bit of ease for them when they're not so used to accessing a link, so to speak. Uh, we've been speaking with Jeff Hillam, CEO, and Vanessa Boji. COO of Red House with uh, my co-host Evan Macedo, Sapers and Wallach, and FEI. Uh, Jeff, Vanessa, if someone was looking to get hold of you, understand Red House, uh, how would they find you? Listen, the easiest way to get a hold of us is always our website. That's redhousemed.com. And uh, there's an easy contact us spot there. That's the best way. All right. And you're also posting every day on Facebook different uh, themes. Always someone interesting to track. Perfect. So, great. Uh, I want to thank you guys. Evan, if someone was looking for you, uh, FEI, uh, Leadership, Sapers and Wallach, how would they find you? Uh, if you're looking for uh, FEI Financial Executives International, you can just go to our website, which is feiboston.org. Uh, secondly, if you're trying to reach me at Sapers and Wallach, uh, easiest way, again, just go to our website. And like Jeff said, we have a contact us button. It's uh, www.sapers.org wallet.com Great. Thank you, everybody. Stay well. And uh, Jeff, you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Perfect. Thanks for having us on. Thanks. Thanks. Remind you. everybody, this is Radio Entrepreneurs.